In the global space industry landscape, SpaceX isn't the only player. However, over the past decade, SpaceX has established and maintained a substantial lead over the rest of the industry. This advantage comes not only from pioneering reusable rocket technology, which has significantly reduced launch costs, but also from its rapid pace of technological innovation and successful execution of complex missions. Notably, with a high launch frequency and success rate, SpaceX has set a new industry standard, forcing competitors to constantly chase after it, but unable to bridge the gap. So the U.S. military recognizes this and seeks to maintain it by investing in SpaceX. They see it as an opportunity to continue America's technological lead over the competition. Even if ambitious concepts such as deploying space-based Marines via Starship in 30 minutes don't come to fruition, the U.S. military views investment in SpaceX as a relatively modest yet extremely effective means to maintain U.S. dominance in space and aerospace. Right now, U.S. military contracts civilian companies like SpaceX for launch services. For instance, back in 2020, SpaceX was awarded approximately 40% of the U.S. Space Force's launch service contracts through this year. The company's been heavily involved in launching U.S. military satellites using affordable platforms like Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. Most recently, Space Systems Command gave SpaceX a launch contract worth up to $733 million, covering seven satellite launches for Space Development Agency's Data Relay Network and additional classified launches for the National Reconnaissance Office. SpaceX outcompeted two other companies to secure Lane 1 in the third phase of the National Security Space Launch NSSL program, which was designed for high-risk, commercially modeled missions. The other two companies, United Launch Alliance and Blue Origin, are still certifying their new rockets to meet NSSL standards, making SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy the only proven workhorses and explaining why SpaceX accounted for 90% of U.S. launches in 2023. This illustrates the importance of SpaceX development over the years, and the company's relationship with the U.S. military has only deepened. While some may not be happy about that, including the competition, as the Space Force allocates missions unevenly within the industry, SpaceX's superior capabilities are undeniable. Notably, just three days before getting awarded this valuable contract, SpaceX successfully caught the Super Heavy Booster mid-air during Flight 5, a groundbreaking achievement previously unseen in the industry. This resounding victory is also a strong blow to the sentiments of U.S. military officials who were already interested in SpaceX's launch services and are now paying even closer attention to SpaceX, especially the company's Starship program. So, what features does Starship have that left most of the top U.S. military leaders in awe? Starship is quite different from any rocket coming before it. Once operational, its size, payload capacity, reusability, and the sheer number of vehicles planned for production is going to dwarf anything built over the last 70 years. First, got to highlight Starship's capability for rapid transportation. The driving force behind this is the military's potential to use rockets to deliver supplies, possibly even troops down the road, anywhere in the world in under an hour. Pentagon officials began considering this idea 20 years ago, but it's only with the advent of Starship that this vision has become closer to reality. Envision a number of containers sitting in a warehouse down at Cape Canaveral. We go to an alert level, pull them up, you start holding them on the rocket, said Gregory Spaniers, chief scientist for the U.S. Air Force Research Lab. At each successive alert level, your time to launch shrinks and shrinks and shrinks, and we can get it down to an hour. Spaniards and teams have already been making mock-ups of Starship's cargo bay, figuring out how to take advantage of a quick supply run. Speed is the obvious draw, but the cost is dropping and getting closer to existing expenses for moving supplies. The Starship's Super Heavy system is going to be fully reusable, unlike any rockets flying right now. The Super Heavy booster, similar to SpaceX's current Falcon 9 fleet, comes back to the launch site. However, unlike Falcon 9, Super Heavy can be caught by the launch tower, stacked onto a new Starship, refueled, and then relaunched. Coupled with its design, Starship has really reduced costs for SpaceX. Now, we may already know about SpaceX's current fleet of Falcon 9s, with boosters initially designed for 10 flights, but potentially capable of reaching up to 40 flights. This innovation has driven launch costs down from approximately $4,500 to around $900 a pound. Falcon 9 right now can carry between 44,000 and 132,000 pounds. But Starship is a very different breed, said Gary Henry, Senior Advisor for National Security Space Solutions at SpaceX. Starship is fundamentally designed for rapid reusability. We engineered the vehicle from the start to fly 100 times, not just 10, and it'll lift up to 250,000 pounds in the LEO. 
He added that Starship will lower orbital cost to an initial $90 a pound, with Elon projected this dropping to $9 a pound in the future. If achieved, this would make a single Starship launch cost less than a thousandth of NASA's closest equivalent, the Space Launch System. This cost is nearly comparable to military supply missions using C-17s, though Starship flights would take mere minutes instead of hours. Next is the launch frequency SpaceX has got planned for Starship. This frequency depends on building a huge fleet of starships, with SpaceX envisioning the production of up to a thousand starships in various variants over the coming years. They plan to launch dozens, then hundreds, and ultimately thousands of starships every year. Right now, SpaceX has one operational launch tower at Starbase in Texas and is building another one, Tower B. They are also constructing a starship launch tower at the Kennedy Space Center. To meet its launch schedule, SpaceX will require multiple towers at launch sites in Texas, California, and Kennedy, with potential expansion to new sites to enable point-to-point -point delivery for the military's interest. But point-to-point -point cargo supply isn't the sole reason Space Force is interested in Starship. They're also checking out military applications for Starship in space. The ability to rapidly deploy cargo over long distances offers significant strategic advantages in the Indo-Pacific. As U.S. military officials foresee a potential high-stakes conflict in that region involving U.S. forces, which some have suggested could start up before 2026, Starship could undertake potentially sensitive and dangerous missions in a Pacific theater conflict. Coupled with short timelines of a launch from Cape Canaveral to Vandenberg or the Pacific Theater, Purdy previously said at the April 2023 Space Symposium that Starship's capacity really starts to open one eyes to think about how we can support an Indo-PACCOM fight directly with a rocket cargo type concept that comes back and lands on different islands. Other potential missions may include quickly launching satellites during a possible future war in space with a near-peer adversary like China or Russia, which is becoming an increasing concern in recent years given that space is now a highly contested environment. Rapid space access for replacing lost satellites and putting new capabilities in orbit during conflict has long been a major goal of the Pentagon. With Starship's heavy lift capabilities, it could deploy entire constellations of smaller satellites rapidly if needed. Independence of direct ownership would also mean DoD would have assured access to the capability outside the influence of corporate whims. However, this is something the head of SpaceX, Elon, does not fully agree with. Elon appears reluctant for his company's products to be used for purposes that might fuel warfare or conflict with other nations. For this reason, even the DoD's military interests, SpaceX and Elon would certainly want a degree of authority over Starship's missions. We've seen Elon previously restrict access to Starlink satellites in Ukraine as the technology was reportedly being used to support targets on Crimea, a decision that may still weigh on Pentagon planners. With high expectations around Starship testing in the coming months, it remains to be seen whether the U.S. military is genuinely going to speed up the logistical capabilities of space-based transportation in the future. In early 2022, the Air Force Research Lab awarded SpaceX a five-year, $102 million contract to gather flight data from the Starship rocket program, aiming to demonstrate technologies for point-to-point -point cargo transport and humanitarian aid via Starship. While SpaceX has yet to successfully launch any payload on Starship, the program's progressing steadily along the company's proven path to success. Starship's Flight 5 mission managed to capture the Super Heavy booster with the chopsticks, and just a month out, they're going to be conducting Starship Flight 6, signaling growing confidence in the rocket catch system, a critical component for fully reusables and a trend shaping today's competitive launch market. Next year, SpaceX is set to see a surge in Starship launches as the Star Factory runs smoothly and Launch Tower B at Starbase becomes operational. I can barely imagine how magnificent these modern spectacles are going to be, undoubtedly setting a model standard. The Air Force expects to fully demonstrate the cargo rocket concept by 2026. Recent comments emphasize that if this does become a reality, the Pentagon views owning Starship as a significant future priority. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for checking it out and see you next time. Bye.